Stephanie's very special, right? Oh. All she is showing is caveman haircuts. But between her and her husband, they're entrepreneurs. What else do you guys have? So we have a tire shop um, located on Fair Road. It's 5630 Fair Road. We also have a trucking company as well. And we also sell sex toys. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> what's up everybody this is what's up with john duncan and i am here on site at a very special place as you all know i just retired from the military and when you go on leave uh you want to grow out your beard right uh because being in the military, you can't have any facial hair unless you got a shaving profile. At any rate, for me, uh, I, my hair don't grow no more. So I have facial hair and I wanted somebody to take care of my beard because I made up my mind that when I retire from the military, I want to have a very nice beard. Uh, but I wanted to find somebody that knows how to trim up my beard, take care of my beard, give me good advice on how I can uh, treat my beard so it can stay luscious and all that good stuff. And I came across, uh, uh, a very special person that not only does she cut hair, but she has different facades to her, who she is. And so her name is Stephanie Bradley and she's amazing. And she's here at uh, Caveman Haircuts on Two Notch Road. And so without further ado, here's Stephanie Bradley. What's going on? Everybody clap it up for Stephanie Bradley. You shouldn't what? have, you shouldn't have. What's going on, Stephanie? How are you? Doing, John. So you know I got these questions that I want to ask you and, um, my first question is, tell the people who you are. Y'all haven't heard about me? Oh, y'all bet. <laughs> anyway, I'm Stephanie Bradley. Um, I was born and raised in Winsboro, South Carolina. Um, baby of six, um, single parent home. My dad came around, you know, drop off money, clothes, shoes, stuff like that. But um, pretty much it's just me trying to get where I need to be in life or where I think I need to be in life. So... That's awesome. So, you know, that's just a synopsis of who she is. But like, as I've gotten to know Stephanie, um, man, she's pretty amazing and she's not giving herself a lot of credit, but we're going to get into that. So, um, so Stephanie, how long you been cutting hair? 18 years. Okay. Yeah. You've been cutting hair for 18 years. How did you know when you, years. how did you know you wanted to be a barber? So I started out doing women's hair. Um, okay. we, I'm a woman, I'm picky. So I didn't want to deal with that same energy. So I got okay. into, you know, cutting guys hair. Um, it brought more fun. We had great conversations. Um, I know what I want the man to look like. So it just came natural to me. Yeah. Um, so when I decided that I wanted to, um, cut hair is when I got aggravated with the women clients. You got aggravated with the women. <laughs> aggravated. They got on your nerves. Ooh, I'm a woman, so I know I get on my style. <laughs> was it the sew-ins or what, what, what was it? It was that everything. The sew-ins, the color, the falling asleep at the bowl. Oh. Um, like not being satisfied with nothing. Not saying all women are like that, but I'm just saying I'm a picky woman when it comes to my hair, so I can understand the frustration. Yeah, yeah. So you just said my stylist. So you just said, hey, look, I want to work with men. Yeah, I just wanted something easier. Um, yeah. Not per se easier, but. Working with guys is more like a safe haven for me okay. versus work doing women's hair. I went okay. to school for cosmetology, but then later on I switched over to barbering. Okay. Well, I mean, like what you've established here, mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that um, one of my uh, uh, battle buddies, we call it, referred right. me to here. He said, man, you got to go to Caveman. Right. And I asked him, like, I was like, what is Caveman? Like, right. you know, I was going to another establishment, which I will leave it unnamed. Mm -hmm. And um, I was getting like razor bumps and right. I was getting, um, you know, it, it was just not good service. Right. And when he said, you need to come to Caveman Haircuts right. and you need to talk to Stephanie. Right. I was like, all right, cool. I'll go there. And, 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 and so I'm glad I did. Right. You know, and, and here we are. Right. Because you you were telling me like, you know, you identified that the barber wasn't doing a good job, mm -hmm. the trimming, and then you got different oils and product lines right. that I utilize still to this day. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing. So uh, I'm glad I came to Caveman. Um, so next question is, um, when did you decide you wanted to start your own business? Okay, so before we get to that question, I'm gonna go back to, okay. to make a correction. I don't hate doing women, I do short haircuts. Okay, so uh, what was that question again? Yeah, she do short haircuts. Short haircuts. <laughs> and she does good. You know, she don't hate women. She, I don't hate y'all. <laughs> y'all just pick it. Right. Yeah. But she do, she'll cut your hair short. change that up a little bit. I yeah, love everybody. Yeah, yeah, she loves everybody. Um, unless you want to sew in. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. So my question was, when did you decide you wanted to start your own 
barbershop, your own business. Right. So at first, um, when I jumped into caveman haircuts, it was a salon for men. Okay. Um, I wasn't a barber at the time, but I could cut, do everything. Every service that a lady would get, perms, uh, relaxers, color, mm -hmm. waxing, manicures, pedicures, we a full service salon for men. Um, and then later on, within the eight years of me being in my own barbershop, that's when I decided to switch over, excuse me, to um, a barber. But I decided that I wanted to open my own barbershop is when I was working for this particular franchise and okay. they didn't, you know, they didn't value my worth. So at that point, I knew if I wanted mm. to offer other stylists and barbers like the opportunity to grow, I needed to open up my own shop. Mm. When you say they didn't value your worth, what did you mean by that? Working 68 hours a week um, on commission um, with the scale that you work in like a franchise, this yeah. particular franchise, I won't call their name, but if you don't keep the number of cuts up per hour, then your pay rate go down. Mm. So it's like a sliding scale. So you had to be busy from the time you get there to the time you pretty much leave to get a good paycheck. Gotcha. So I was exhausted, I was tired, and I was making no money. So mm. at that point, I'm like, I don't want to you want rush to on my clients. Yeah. I don't want to, I just want to give everybody that one-on-one, -on -one, enough time to talk, get you the way you need to be so you can go. But, yeah, and so like, at Caveman, one thing, you, I mean, uh, Stephanie and her staff, they cut my, my family's hair, they cut my son's hair, uh, both my son's hair. Uh, but what I like here is I, I, I come here once a week right. uh, to get my beard done. And I do need to get my beard. I'll probably come back here tomorrow to get my beard done. He'll be back uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be back. But um, it's the atmosphere. Right. Right. Um, as a man, you know, I like coming here. I, I drink, right. you know. Uh, the caveman, if you have AIDS, will give you a beer. They got right. Modelo, they got Heineken, they got uh, 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 um, uh, Stella. But listen, I'm not. That's not a shameless plug to say that this is the beers. You might come here and right. You know, every shoot. week I try to change yeah. it up, but we always have Modelo. They always have Modelo, so I can sit back as I'm waiting, as I'm browsing through my phone, and I can have a beer. And one thing is, uh, even though Stephanie is my my barber, mm -hmm. the professionalism that she asked me is like, "Hey, you want a beer?" You know, and I, I like that here. Right. Like it's a, it's a very relaxing uh, environment. My like the pool table is right behind me. My right. son comes here and he plays pool. Mm -hmm. I see uh, all demographics of people that come here right. uh, to get their kids' haircuts mm -hmm. or or you know whoever's sitting in the chair. They just seem really relaxed. So right. uh, that's awesome. Thank um, you. So um, when did you know you were going to start like caveman? How did you come up with that concept? Okay, so it's funny how it started. Okay. Um, I've talked, like I said, I wrote about it in my yearbook, um, everything, my life plan. Yearbook like when? 2004, when I graduated high school. I wrote oh, so this the has plan. been... The plan has been in effect since middle school, really. I just put yeah. it in my high school yearbook and I said, I gotta do this. So the plan didn't really, because I wanted to go into the industry, like seeing how each part operate, like, the private salons, um, the franchise. I wanted to see what everybody offers so I can be different from them. That's Cause awesome. I didn't want to offer that same, you know, headache or whatever. And I would say the headache to me, I don't know how everybody else feel, but to me it was just like, I feel like it stumped my growth. So um, mm. I was talking to my brother one day, it was okay. Christmas. And I was telling him, I was like, you know what? I think next year I'm gonna go ahead and just open up my shop. And he was like, okay, we'll do it. So. He called me two weeks later. He was okay. like, I found a shop. And I was mm. like, what? He was like, yeah, I found a shop. I said, okay, whatever. Then so we hung up the phone or whatever because he always play a lot. So then right. my husband came along at the time. It was my boyfriend. He was like, yo, I found a shop. I was like, okay, so where is it? All right, there's two people that told me that. Yeah, yeah. So um, my husband, we came, we rolled by. That's when we found Mills Creek and it was a vacant building. Right. He was like, what you want to do? And I was like, well, I guess it's the time. I went in and talked to the guy, came in. I had no plans of opening it up that soon, but that's when it happened. So it was just like a spare of the moment type kind of thing. But the planning was our, everything was already written in stone. So the foundation was started back in 2004. Yeah, the, the name and all that stuff. So you already wrote it down and made a plan. It was already in the planning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, your boyfriend, now husband, right. brother came to you and said, hey, look, found some shop. found you something. Right. And you was like, this it. Yeah, I'm at that point in time, I was like, all right, at two, yeah. I believe in two, not three. Yes. Yeah. If it comes twice, then it's going to happen on three. Right. Right. So. And it's been a success ever since. Right. Right. So that's awesome. That That's a great, that, that, that's awesome. Um, so we're gonna shift gears a little bit, okay? Right? 
we talked about the business right. and, and who you are and whatnot, but like, like, who inspires you? My mom. Okay, elaborate on that. So my mom was an entrepreneur. Um, she had six kids, like I said, a single mother. Um, well, she was with her first husband, but they ran a club and everything together. So as I grew, I saw them running the club. So I'm like, damn, my mom is a boss lady. Mm -hmm. I want to do the same thing. It took a turn with her and her husband okay. um, or whatever. I came along with, hold on, let me go back. Go back. So my mom, had a club when I was a, like three or four with my dad, mm -hmm. not her first husband. He okay. was already gone. Okay, and I was like three or four, but I would see how my mom would run this stuff with her, you know, they would work together somewhat on a business level. So my mom started a nonprofit organization where she adopted families for Christmas. Mm. Um, like a, a whole bunch of stuff that inspired me that I want to do the same thing. And I feel like barbering helps people. You yeah. know, you might have low self esteem, you get a haircut, then you think you did it. Mm. So by seeing her helping people, kids and everybody in need, I felt like, okay, I can do something different, but give that same type of help through a haircut. Give that same type of help through a haircut. Um, I know I don't look like it now, <laughs> but I used to have a lot of hair. Uh, you know, uh, father time has kicked in and now right. the hair is gone. Right. But I can relate to what you're saying, like, you know, going in feeling some type of way looking mm -hmm. in a mirror right. and coming out mm -hmm. like you don't know what somebody's going through yeah right? it could just be a simple little haircut it could be a simple little haircut simple beard trim yeah. you know and just a nice conversation yeah you know some of those kids that didn't have their parents they was right. in foster care you just go up to them hug them dress as santa give them a toy it makes yeah. their day but let's let's stay on your mom All right um because you got to see at an early age mm -hmm. uh a black woman mm -hmm. um, showing you that anything's possible right and you know what does that mean to you every day waking up and seeing your mom go get it what did, what did that do for you so seeing so my mom passed away in 2011 okay. Sorry um, that. seeing her get up and go get it was like I have no reason to be lazy. Mm. I have no reason not to get what I need in life. And another thing that inspired me too, when I got old enough, yeah. she shared with me, I was in a newspaper, I think I won a contest or something, but it made it to Washington, D.C. Well, oh. it was shipped back to her, signed by the president, saying Who that the president? Your, daughter would, your daughter would be something one day. I born in 1986. Was, was it Obama? No, oh, let, I was 1986 is when I was born and I okay, was in a baby gotcha, contest. Gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha. somehow that out that article got to the White House. The president signed it and sent it back to my mom and said she's going to be something one day. I got to find. Was it Ronald was, Reagan? I'm not sure who it was. I, she showed me when I got like eight or nine, but I didn't yeah, know. Let what me just Google this time. real quick. This is this is <laughs> like this, folks. This was not part of the interview, it wasn't. but I want to see. Uh, who was the president in 1986? 86. I have that. I, I know my sister still have it because she keeps everything. Who was So that's that's uh, pretty impressive. That like mm -hmm. so from from the womb before you was before I was even walking yeah. and talking. I, I don't like I said I would have. It was Ronald Reagan. Sister. It was. So you got Ronald Reagan, one of the iconic presidents yep. uh, of our time, um, recognizing you. As a baby. As a baby. Yep. And, and she cuts she way. cuts my beard. <laughs> she cuts my beard, folks. I ain't nothing too special. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you you're know. very special. One day we're going to know about John yeah. Duncan yeah. and Stephanie Bradley. That's awesome. And Mr. Leo, who's behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. So, um, your mom, mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. Right. Uh, your mom, <clears throat> the visionary. Right. Uh, your mom, uh, even in the times when she was coming up and mm -hmm. what she faced right. in her life, she showed you that, um, you know, without even having a father right. uh, being in your life, that you could still be a successful black woman, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, who was around you, right? Like who who was around you that you seen male figures right. that you seen uh, with your mom right. or like help raise you, what they look like. Right, so my brothers, um, my uncles and everybody was a big inspiration in my life. Yeah. Um, but also my mama's best friends. Um, she had two, I don't want to say 
I don't know what the word to say. Gay yeah. friends. Okay. Two gay um, male friends um, that were around a lot um, that showed me like different things that I didn't know mm-hmm. of how to conduct myself. Mm. Um, basically manners, keeping my legs crossed when I'm sitting. Yeah. Still notice to this day. Yeah. Having my hands crossed, you know, yeah. how to eat with a fork, how to place it down on the table, just a whole bunch of stuff that I felt like, my mom taught me a lot too, but I felt like my dad, you know, if we would've had that one-on-one, that's the attention and the, you know, the focus that he should've been giving me, but right. it came from my mama's best friends. That just so happened to be gay? Be gay, yeah. Right, and you didn't, you didn't. I, I'm, I didn't know what gay was back then. Right. I loved them because they loved me. Right, and they were men. Yeah, men. And they showed you what right looks like. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Right. I think that's so powerful in, 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 in in today's society we we live in where people are judged by who they love or what they like but you as a young lady Mm -hmm. growing up looking at a strong woman right right that was best friends with Mm -hmm. uh two men you know that they but they knew how to be men. Yeah, they knew right? how to be men. They knew how to be men, and they, they seen you as probably their, do- their daughter. Right. And look where you at today. Mm-hmm. And, and if anybody would say that, man, like, who was the male role model in your life? You could say, hey, man, it was, it was you know. My mama's best friends. Like I said, my daddy come around, yeah. but it was like, hmm. Yeah. You know. I think that's, I think that's. That's awesome. That's mm-hmm. that. So if you watching this right now and, and, and you see that somebody that don't look like you like what you like, they're still human and they can add value to it. Mm-hmm. Stephanie's an example of it. Um, I mean, and, and that's that's awesome. Um, now, like you've been a barber for 18 years. Right. You've been cutting a lot of hair. Mm-hmm. You started your own business. You right. didn't probably didn't cut over 10,000, 50,000 heads. Uh, Lord knows how many, but right. what's the one craziest story that you could share mm-hmm. without saying nobody names oh, um. <laughs> sitting in that chair? What's the craziest, one of the craziest stories? So, you know, we're therapists too. Yeah. Counselors, I mean, lawyers, doctors and everything. Right. Everybody opens up to you if they feel comfortable. Gotcha. You know, sometimes a haircut or a beard trim might take 30 minutes and we go over into an hour. Right. Um, it's just the advice and like everything. I actually helped a guy stop um, his divorce. Oh, wow. Um, he was thinking about leaving his wife because Ooh. she had a child outside of wedlock. Um, while he was married? Yeah, while he was married. Ooh. That's a tough one. That's very tough. But she got raped when she was out with her friends. But he <gasps> thought that she was lying and he thought that she cheated, but she didn't cheat on him. She was raped. And she decided to keep the kid. She decided to keep the kid because they didn't have a kid and she really wanted a kid. I don't know. He didn't tell me if something was wrong with him. Right, right. But they couldn't have a kid. Right. So she just decided to keep the kid. But he was about to leave because he was like he didn't want to raise a kid that wasn't his. What did you tell him? I mean, like, how did you? I told him. How I did you like, convince? Look, Eddie, Be- Stephanie, I just want to say something because, like, that's tough. That is tough. That's 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 like, man. That like, you want me to believe? And you tell him you gonna keep it? Yeah. Like that's that's rough. But man. at the end of the day, like I told him, yeah, y'all united as one. Yeah. Right. If you couldn't have a kid together, maybe this is God's way of giving you that child that you need. Right. And you just need to think about it. Don't look at it as you got played or anything like that. Just look at it as a blessing. Blessings comes in different forms. Mm. Might not how we want it to come, but it is gonna come regardless. Yeah. So he sat down. He thought about it. A couple weeks later, he came back. He was like, I decided to love the child as mom. And that was through you. Yep. You you inspire somebody. You inspired a man mm-hmm. uh, to sit in that chair. Mm-hmm. You didn't know him from Adam. No, it's his first time here. Gave him a beer. He started opening up. Did it make you emotional, or did you just talk to him? Like what? No, was it? it was like okay, so okay, if a situation was to happen, yeah, you know, everybody make mistakes, right? You know right. that. I mean, she should have been more responsible if she went yeah. out with her friends and got drunk. Yeah, you know, something just happened. But at the end of the day, it's like you know, we human, we make mistakes. Stuff can happen, you right. know. I mean, just don't hold, don't lose out on something good because you love this lady because of like something. Yeah, you know. I mean, it, it was, I ain't know you was gonna tell me that story. Like, I, I, I thought you were gonna say something funny. No. I thought it was gonna be something funny, folks. <laughs> like, I don't tell her all the questions, but like, you know, I didn't know she was gonna say that. But that's, I mean, it's therapeutic. Like you yeah, said, you're somebody's I mean, therapist. So you saved, you saved a marriage. You 
that's 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 mm -hmm. that's big because trying to tell me that like you know you pregnant by somebody else and you want me to stay but the thing is she didn't know she was pregnant right she told him what happened that night or whatever then months down the line she got bigger went to the daughter and then he said that's when she told him and he thought she was lying he thought she had an affair Mm, so she was actually she was right but after the daughters did all the love i guess she waited too late you know they mm -hmm. can see if somebody else's dna is in it but they did the dna test or whatever found out it wasn't his kid so he felt comfortable about that but he still was like you know yeah i had to just accept it and move he was like you was right he was like blessings coming just guys does he still come here today yeah he still come have you seen the child yeah i've seen the child yeah beautiful baby okay. have you met her yeah i met her too wow Every time she comes, she give me a hug. Cause you saved her marriage. Mm -hmm. She didn't really mean for that to happen, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. Did you get emotional when you seen the baby? Yeah. You know the backstory. I did. Yeah. Yeah, but the baby, he's innocent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what he was supposed to do. Yeah. So it's yeah. not his fault, but that's what people need to know. Like nowadays, like you can save it if you want to. You know, just to, you know, everybody's so quick to jump. Like I'm about to leave. Well. What you gonna get when you get out there? Yeah. You gotta start over, you gotta do this. If it was a mistake, just move on from it. Right. Take a vow to God. She's my barber. <laughs> Y'all can't have a Y'all can come on. <laughs> come on over to Caveman Haircuts. Um, I got a question. So, you know, being who you are mm -hmm. and all the success that you had. Right. If somebody looked at you and said, you know, they didn't know that you were raised by a single mother. Your right. father wasn't there. You were you 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 were mentored and showed how a young woman should treat be treated mm -hmm. and conduct herself by you know two gay men. Right. Um, and and everything that you've uh, been through. Right. Uh, I think that 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 you could be underestimated. Yep. You know, but here you are. You, mm -hmm. I mean, I just learned you just saved. You got to You do have this infectious type of personality. Right. People do want to open up to mm -hmm. you. Uh, and Stephanie's very nosy. So if y'all get to sit with Stephanie, <laughs> she gonna ask y'all a lot of questions. Just be prepared for it. You ain't, you can answer them or not, but she got. I think she. When you sit in the chair, she puts a spell on the chair, <laughs> and you just want to open up. It's just therapeutic as you drink your Modelo. Um, but. What advice would you tell a young man or woman uh, that wants to start their own business, right? right? Because you said um, yours started back in 2004. Yeah. Your husband, your brother seen it, then your mm -hmm. your husband said what you want to do. Right. So what advice would you would you give anybody that wants person. to start, a young person, yeah. My thing is this, um, if you know what you want to do, just go forward. Um, the support is helpful, but if you don't have the family support, you just gotta find those who will support you. Um, do your research and just go for it. Don't stop for nothing. You just yeah. gotta be all gas. Yeah, no breaks. No breaks. Just do it. You just gonna work, 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 work until you get it where you want to. Yeah, do. yeah. So, um, I do got a question. Who do you accept at Caveman Haircuts? Who do you accept here? Demographic of people. Everybody's accepted. I don't know if um you see all the flags. Everybody from around the world has came here. Um, every race, every country, bisexual, gay, whatever. Everybody's accepted here. Yeah. And so I want to I want to say something really quick. Um, my cameraman uh, is behind the scenes the person that's doing all of this, and he put a lot of things in perspective. And the reason why I asked that question for this podcast is because he brought up a very valid point in reference to um, he is a uh, gay man, right? But I'll tell you right now, he's very good at what he does, mm -hmm. the lighting, the the camera. Um, and me, a as being a heterosexual man and having wife and kids, I got mad respect for him. I don't care about who he loves mm -hmm. or, um, you know, I do care about who he loves as long as they loving him back. Right. Um, so, but he put things in perspective about when he met Stephanie. Right. And, you, you know, the B-roll that y'all gonna see in this in this clip, where it was hilarious. I wish we could have recorded it. Stephanie had him oh. doing a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff. Talking about good knees, good knees. Oh, I forgot about but, it. <laughs> One thing that he talked about was that that Leo, uh, as he holds his camera, I'm looking at it, was being feeling accepted. 
Okay. Talking about the barbershop should be a safe place um, and knowing that the owner will protect him. Right or whoever comes into the establishment to let him know that they're welcome, no matter uh, their sexual orientation, their religious background. And I get the feel here at Caveman Haircuts that, you know, you do uh, display that and knowing a little bit more about you right. and your background mm -hmm. of why. Right. And it puts it all into perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's the question why I wanted to ask is like, who do you accept here? Right. Whether you are, you know, uh, gay, straight, atheist, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whoever. Right. You know what I mean? If you come here and you got pink hair or whatever the situation may be, you could sit in Stephanie's chair and you're going to open up to her because she got some supposed, she got, she put a spell on the chairs. <laughs> so that's awesome. So, um, if you're over 21 years old, you can have a beer. Um, yeah, if you also have juices and sodas and if all you, the kids. If you under 21, they got suckers, bomb bombs, or whatever the dumb dumb pop, uh, suckers <laughs> what my kid always gets. Um, um, I want to go back and just circle back around to you talking about your mom, right? Mm -hmm. um, tell us more about your mom. She's outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, my mom is just amazing. Um, we had before she had, mm -hmm. and that meant a lot to me. Yeah. She would give us the clothes off her back and she wouldn't have anything. Mm -hmm. We would eat before her. Mm. She gave us left over. She made sacrifices to make sure that we needed the nutrition that we needed to grow. You know, she was, that's that lady. She was the woman. She was the woman. She was the woman. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about, I think everybody think their parents are the the woman, but she didn't only care for us. She cared for other kids as well. Yeah. Other people. Uh -huh. It didn't matter who you was. My mom would cook Sunday dinner. She cooked so much. One day, everybody coming in. Mm. Look, you remember the little guys on the bicycles with the white shirts that come around and talk about the Bible? Yeah. They'll come to my mama's house every Sunday. Just to eat? Just to eat. What's your mama cook? Everything. Homemade cornbread, homemade cakes, fried chicken, macaroni, anything you can think of. Well, every Sunday was something different. What was your favorite dish for your mom? Everything. Everything? Everything. <laughs> everything. You can see it. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's awesome. So, I... I think your mom would be very proud of you. I, I hope so. Yeah, I, I think she would be very proud of you. Right. Um, so, next question is, uh, what's your biggest struggle being a barbershop business owner? Hmm. Being a woman. Hmm. When I first um, put my sign up, got everything in the shop on my side looking like, yeah, taking pictures, this guy rolled by, he was like, hey. I was like, hey. He was like, what is this? I said, it's a salon for men. He was like, you on it? I was like, yeah. He was like, ain't nobody coming in there. Mm. I was like, why is that? He was like, you a woman. Ain't no, ain't no man gonna let no woman cut their hair. What? And he drove off. Yeah. Two years later, he walked through the door. I remember his exact face. I was like, oh, so you decided to let a woman cut your hair? He was like, can you cut my hair? I was like, yeah, come back. Cut it. He was like, this is the best haircut I ever had. He still come here to this day. So your biggest struggle with being a barbershop business owner is being a woman. Woman, yeah. yeah. They always say women can't cut hair or a man is not going to um, let you cut their hair. You know, just different things like that. It was a man that referred me to a woman. Right. It was a man that was a soldier with a nice beard that I liked. And automatically I assumed another man did it. But it was a woman. And her name so happened to be Stephanie Bradley. Mm -hmm. And now she cuts my, my children's hair. And... Uh, she gonna cut my hair until the day I die, you know, uh, and I stand by that. I'll wait, like I'll wait. Like it's, it, mm -hmm. she uh, just celebrated her husband's birthday and I like her haircuts, uh, her trim up so good that I waited two weeks. Mm -hmm. I ain't let nobody else touch my hair. <laughs> I'm loyal. <laughs> so if you are a man and you are, you have a negativity bias about a female cutting your hair, I would just challenge you to give it a shot and come on over here mm -hmm. to Caveman Haircuts here on Two Notch Road. What's the address? 8606 Two Notch Road. Or you can call Stephanie. Give him the phone number. Oh, what is the phone number? Well, she gonna get the phone number, um, but. What is it? 803-360-677. Oh. Right. And it's if, on Google. If, right. But if that's wrong, <laughs> Leo gonna take care of all that. Um, I don't remember. But. Oh, no. but they also have a website and let me just tell you um i was in here last week mm -hmm. uh and and i jacked it all up 
I, I'm on a special program where uh, I pay a certain amount of money. I get, I have to pay for five trim ups and then I get five free, right? Um, and on the website, Stephanie told me to go to the website, go to the app and punch it in. I jacked it all up, uh, but it's pretty robust and very convenient user friendly um but she has a website I, what's the website it's cavemanhaircuts.com simple yeah. very very simple mm -hmm. um and so i cannot go without saying that uh stephanie's very special right mm -hmm. all she is showing is caveman haircuts but between her and her husband they're entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and they own several businesses here in Columbia, South Carolina, where they service so many people on a daily consistent basis. Mm -hmm. um, so what you see is caveman, but what else do you guys have? So we have a tire shop um, located on Fair Road. It's 5630 Fair Road. We also offer mobile tire service. So if you broke down on the side of the road or anything, uh, we come out, we change your tire on the spot with a full functional tire shop. Um, mobily. Um, we also have a trucking company as well. And we also sell sex toys. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey. uh, sex toys. Yeah. It's a business. Yeah, it's a business. You missed a business though. They also have a uh, Royal... Oh yeah, I forgot the hair product line. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, the Royal hair product line, which is awesome. Uh, the oil come in tomorrow and I'm going to buy two bottles. Um, but let's get back to these sex toys. <laughs> because listen, that's a business. It is. Right? It's an industry. So let me make sure I get this straight. The barbershop, the tire company, the trucking company, the, the hair product line, and sex toys. Yep. So the sex toys are done like, I haven't done a party in a while, but basically what we do. Oh, she got Y'all don't steal my idea now. She got parties. Come find y'all. So we have parties and I have male strippers here. Um, and At the barbershop? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Wherever I decide to host a party at, it's okay. very discreet. I don't want everybody just coming yeah. in. So we have all the toys set up. Um, we have the male strippers in there. Um, they go around entertaining ladies. Um, we have uh, mimosas. We have, you know, every, the whole nine. Uh, they can demonstrate to you how to use the toy. Um, how not, to use the toy? Not physically, but they can show you how to work it and, you know, help you choose the one that you want for you and your partner. So. What's the number one seller? Mm -hmm. What's the number one selling toy? Huh? No, <laughs> the stripper poles and the wands. <laughs> All right, so hey, look. I just want to say this, and we're going to end this, uh, and I'm going to let you get the last word. But thank you for letting me do this. Thank you for having uh, me. You're my very first um, uh, guest. Right. And I just want to showcase uh, business owners that's here in Columbia, right. South Carolina, that you know, go under the radar, mm -hmm. right? And that I interact with on a weekly basis. Right. Uh, so I just want to say I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Uh, proud of you and your husband. Thank you. Um, you know, your story is not everybody's story, but you have right. a very unique story right. on how at Caveman Haircuts, you welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. No matter what you look like, right. no matter who you love, what your uh, background is, right. you sit in a chair, you're going to get a good service mm -hmm. and you're going to leave looking in one of these mirrors feeling good about right. yourself. Um, so congratulations Thank and you. I wish you nothing but continued success. Thank you so much. Um, and, and, and it's getting kind of late but you're still here. Mm -hmm. uh, you told me you got a headache, but it's mm -hmm. just a testament of who you are and right. how you just, you know, just your heart. Gotta you gotta keep going. Heart. I mean, yeah. you asked me about this several weeks and never yeah. had a chance to do it, so I couldn't counsel. So last question, you get the last word. Okay. Um, what's your last words? Be yourself um, in this day and age and time. You can't worry about what nobody will say. You just gotta go out there and do what you wanna do. Um, like I said, coming from the household that I came from, like I said, my mama did her absolute best to raise us. My dad, he wasn't like completely out of the way, but he was not there as much as I needed him to be. Um, but just going through that, it helped me grow strength. And it showed me that anything is possible as long as I believe in myself. So you don't have to wait for nobody to believe in you. That'll come along once you start making your boom, boom, boom. When they see that, look at Beyonce, Jay-Z. Nobody knew about them, but look at them now. So just keep going, have the faith, um, get around people who are as like-minded as you. 
um, at a point in time in our life, we gotta cut off those party animals. Not saying don't party, but let's party in a different way. Let's celebrate when we make an accomplishment. So just keep those words in mind and you'll be successful. Listen, this is What's Up with John Duncan. Caveman Haircuts. Come see Stephanie. And Sharon. And Sharon. Sharon's awesome too. Sharon is, that's my girl. Uh, she's not here, but if you come here to Caveman Haircuts, this is where you want to come. This is where you want to be. If you're looking for awesome quality, uh, premium service, uh, where you can come here, feel good, feel relaxed, feel accepted. It's caveman haircuts. That just so happen to be owned by a woman who serves men uh, and women with short hair. Yeah. Right. Because we don't <laughs> want to talk about that. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to. We don't want to say she. You know, yeah. you got short hair. You want to get trimmed up. This is where you want to come. So, I'm John Duncan with What's Up with What's Up with John Duncan uh, podcast. You can only go from here. Peace. <laughs>